I joined the Independent, uh, must have been around May, June uh, of uh, the summer of 86, which was a few months before the paper actually launched. So, you know, the concept was there and the founders were there um, uh, and they had ideas about what they wanted to do. But on specifics, um, they hadn't fully defined how the the newspaper was going to operate. But there was a big commitment to foreign news from the start. Um, like all people who run newspapers, uh, they didn't believe that you need, needed sub-editors. Uh, we managed to persuade them uh, of that folly. Uh, so the whole copy-editor thing uh, um, uh, was introduced. And what happened, because there were a lot of enthusiastic and, and, and young people who, who wanted to join the paper, really established, uh, talented people were prepared to take copy, copy editing jobs, particularly on the foreign side, to give themselves a foot in the door. So I, I came there from Reuters. I'd been at Reuters for 13 years. Uh, but I fancied a change and I fancied trying my hand at, at the newspaper um, sector. Uh, and a few other people from Reuters came with me, and we predominantly worked on the desk in London where we had uh, Stephen Glover, who was one of the founders, was the foreign editor. Uh, we had a deputy foreign editor who had three assistant foreign editors, of which I was one. So given the relatively limited resources of a, of a startup, we had a very solid basis for, for foreign news. On top of that, they managed to attract some very talented uh, people as correspondents. Um, a rather eclectic bunch, actually. I mean, we had James Fenton, who was an established foreign correspondent, but predominantly known in, in Britain as a poet. Um, and they said to Fenton, well, where do you, where do you want to be uh, based? And he said, yeah, the open choice could have been anywhere in the world. Yeah, Paris, New York, Rome. Uh, he said, I want to go to uh, South Korea. So they said, OK, fair enough, go to South Korea. So I think the Independent became the only Western newspaper that had a full time uh, and very distinguished correspondent in South Korea. And it was a brilliant decision. I mean, I never forget one of Fenton's pieces, which told me more about South Korea than I'd ever known. Uh, and it was about the um, the drinking and dressing habits of South Korean men, uh, who apparently all go out every night, dress up to the nines in Italian suits, and go out every night and get completely plastered. Um, and it was a very skillful way, of, perhaps an unfair one as well, of portraying a society of which we knew nothing.